The issue of reducing the amount of nutrients, especially nitrogen, ending up in Lake Taupo is a complex one. Rangiatia Station has been working on the problem since the early 1990s. In the face of Environment Waikato's proposed nitrogen cap, they adjusted both livestock and management strategies on the station. 1st of May 1990, the farmer took over the ownership of Rangiatia Station and we've been administering it ever since. We're a committee made up of five members from diverse backgrounds. Uh, we all do have a business background. Three of us have been in farming for quite, quite some time. Uh, one into forestry and of course our, our best member, our lady member, Tanya, she is, uh, has a diverse portfolio. We are 900 owners made up of individual and family trusts. Our number one priority is to pay a dividend every year. And the impacts of the nitrate cap is trying to find a sustainable farming to give us that in return. Our cultural aspect is kept totally separate from the business. So um, it allows our business to carry on to, 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 um, to get the end result of that number one priority. The property's in a region of 22 kilometres long. Not very wide, k and a half wide at, to narrow a bit, but not much wider when it widens out. About 4,300 hectares in total area, of which 500 hectares, 600 hectares is uh, pine trees. Um, and the rest, 1,500 hectares is um, effective area. And the remainder is in conservation areas and or native regenerating bush. We run primarily um, 6,000 Romney type ewes, 400 breeding cows, they're predominantly white faced cows, Angus Hereford cross, and 1,000 hinds, of which they're primarily a red breed, a um, little bit of Danish type red hind. There's quite a range of country. The top country is quite cold, late, late to uh, start growing grass. We normally don't bank on too much before the middle of November. Rainfall is up to three metres plus, whereas you go down by the lake, your rainfall's down to 12, 1,300 mils. The strengths are that in a dry summer like we had last summer, we can load the summer country up and lighten off the lower country which was essential in uh, us maintaining our percentages, lambing, calving, whatever, um, to have a, a three metre rainfall in a dry, dry summer is, is a bonus. It's a real bonus. The protection of Lake Taupo has been an ongoing concern, both for the region and farmers. Colin Gates explains why Rangatia Station decided to become involved with the Monitor Farm program. Everything that falls on the property, I presume, that doesn't get used through the, the plants will we'll end up filtering down to the lake. We decided on being a meat and wool monitor farm, or in our case it's more a case study farm, uh, to see whether we can farm within the, the end cap sustainably. Um, but it was also to, to have um, more knowledgeable people help us out with um, scenarios as, as the best way to do it, I guess, be it selling nitrogen or farming carbon or, or anything else that may crop up on the, as a monitor farm. The main changes to Rangiatia Station since hand back in 1990 is probably the transfer of about 500 hectares from pastoral farming into plantation forestry. We've also seen, because of that, a reduction in about 3,000 stock units down to about 18,000 stock units. The balance of pasture in fact, has been, of course, increased in terms of its uh, productivity. We've also increased deer on the property from negligible proportion up to now 20% of the wintered stock units on the property. Production, of course, has also gone up substantially. For example, the property was lambing about 95% from its use back in 1990. Today, it's just under 140% survival. We're also now lambing hoggets and finishing cattle a year earlier. The effect of changing from cattle to deer is firstly, they fit the feed pattern very much better than cattle do. But secondly, they are friendly in terms of the nitrogen leaching from the urine of the deer relative to cattle. 
The main problem with cattle is they leave a big pool of nitrogen which leaches a very high rate through the soil. Deer tend physically to scatter the urine around more and are much more friendly from that perspective. The impact of the nitrogen cap, we of course don't know the full effects of it yet. In the short term, the impact will be a restriction on the ability to achieve the immediate potential which is there in production and in profit. In other words, by perhaps applying a lot more fertiliser and nitrogen in the short term to get that potential. That short term effect will be a reduction in profit. There will also be, as we're seeing already, significant compliance costs with this. I think the longer term effects will be far more significant, particularly for the multiple owned Maori properties, which bear in mind much of the land effectively cannot be sold. What I think they'll see in time, and we're talking 10 years plus, will be a reduction in the farming cash surplus, therefore a reduction in the potential payout to owners. They'll also see a reduction in land values, not so much for the multiple owned properties, but certainly for the land owned under European title. Other significant issues I think will be a restriction in the ability to attract and retain top quality farm management, such as we've got at the moment with Colin and Joe Gates. That's a critical issue in terms of maintaining the profitability of any large farm, particularly on this difficult pumice country. So labour will be a problem. The perception out there which I hear commonly is that farmers are polluting the lake so they should clean it up. I suggest the issue is far deeper than that and much more complex. Firstly, you've got the point that these farmers have done nothing wrong. They've legally and genuinely taken land over and farmed it to the best of their ability. Um, I would make a point also that I believe the Crown or the government, successive government's involvement in the development of lands and the contribution of the nitrogen to the lake as it is today has not been fully taken into account, neither have the responsibilities of the Crown. Firstly, by assisting the settlement and then indeed the development of lands from bush and scrub into pasture land. They actually, to an extent, subsidised them with the financial assistance in the terms of suspensory loans and other loans. Of course, the Crown itself was farming nearly 20% of the farmable land in the catchment until recently. So you could ask the question, who is the polluter? I would also say that, um, of course, the landowners who are contributing to the pollution, if, if you like, of the lake with nitrogen should be expected to pay a cost. But my point would be, how much should they be expected to pay? My understanding from Environment Waikato is that the clarity of the water is actually improving at the moment. In fact, in their words, it's the best it's been for some years. So we need to get a pretty strong handle on what's happening as we go forward. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.